Father, we thank you for being our rock. We thank you for being a sure salvation. We ask that you would bless this service, Lord God, that your people would be edified and that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and shalom. Our scripture reading will be coming from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Again, that is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Please join me. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me, comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice came from heaven you are my son whom i love with you i am well pleased that concludes the reading of our scriptures today this is the word of god and i do believe that it is true the grass withereth and the flower fadeth but the word of our lord shall stand forever amen
Jesus. We thank God for that powerful hymn of the church. I pray that it has blessed you this morning. At this time, we have a special presentation from some of our Shalom families. Let's receive them. Good morning, Shalom family, and Happy New Year from the Andersons. We love you guys and miss you and can't wait to get back into live service together. Shalom. 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 Happy New Year. Year. From our family to yours, I'm Reggie. I'm Janae. And we would like y'all to help us welcome the newest member to our family, Samson, Samson Jean, Jean Pearson. Pearson. Be, Be blessed, blessed y'all. Hi, I'm Anita. Hi, I'm Brad. We, we are the Shelter family. We just like to wish each and every one of you a blessed, healthy, and safe. Happy New Year. everybody. My name is Bryce Pettiford, and I want to wish Pastor Clark and the entire Shalom Church family a Happy New Year. Hey, Shalom. I just want to say I miss everybody and going to the church. I hope everybody's staying safe and wearing their masks. And, um, yeah, Happy New Year's and stay safe. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Hi, my name is Emma Gordon. I'm a first Sunday greeter. And I want to say to Pastor Clark and Cheryl and the entire Shalom family, a happy and blessed new year. And I miss you all so much. I can't wait till we all get back together. And I'm praying that it'll be real soon. God bless. Amen. Amen. Praise God for our families. It's so wonderful to see you. Amen. Family, as we now move to our prayer period, we do so being mindful of the many prayer concerns that you have called into the church office or sent in by email. We want you to know that our leaders are praying for you each and every day. At this time, we want to lift up our bereaved families. Our prayers are with Daryl Cowboy Jones in the passing of his brother, Vernon Jones. Mother Gloria Williams in the passing of her sister, Doris Swanson of Detroit, Michigan. David Shotwell in the passing of his father, Charles Shotwell. Shauna Young in the passing of her mother and Shalom family member, Ardelia Robinson. Lastly, family, if you are watching today's service and you are unable to declare Jesus as your rock or your blessed assurance, we invite you this morning to receive Jesus into your heart. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So after the proclamation of the word, if you accept that invitation, our information is on the screen. Will you give us a call that we might celebrate you today? Also, if you do not have a church home, we invite you to the Shalom Church City of Peace under the leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark. We'd love to nurture you and join this faith journey with you. At this time, our choir is gonna lead us in song, after which we will go to God in prayer. together in prayer. God, our creator, our redeemer, and sustainer, we honor, we magnify, and we glorify you this morning. God, we thank you for this privilege to come before your presence. We confess, God, that all of us have fallen short of your glory. So we ask you, Lord, for forgiveness in the redeeming name of, of Jesus. We pray, God, for the many names and families and individuals 
that are sick, that are shut in. And certainly for those who are experience, experiencing bereavement right now, we know that you are so able to heal, to, to set free, and to give comfort. Because God, you are our rock. You are our blessed assurance. God, you are our bread of heaven. God, we pray for this nation today in every public service. We pray, God, that you will send your peace in the midst of this social, political, and cultural storm. Then, God, we pray that you will strengthen your church, that we would be an instrument of your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We pray, God, that you would continue to empower our pastor, that you would give him what he needs to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to a dying world. God, we pray for every pastor, for every bishop, every elder, every, every priest. You know what they stand in need of even before, before they ask. Then, Lord, we thank you, God, for being such a very present help in our time of need. Thank you for meeting every need that we have ever had. Thank you, God, for just being so good to us. We know we do not deserve it, but you keep blessing us despite of us. So today, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for everything, oh God, in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we love you so much today. We pray that you would bless the rest of this service. Certainly, blow fresh on that preach word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.
Amen. Grateful to have this opportunity to be able to be in your presence today in your homes. And uh, I pray that the worship has blessed you uh, up to this point. I want to invite your attention to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, the first 11 verses. Now, brothers and sisters, about time and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You're all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other just as, in fact, you are doing. And that concludes our reading. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I've had my television programming interrupted by the loud horn sound of the emergency broadcasting system. EBS saying it's only a test. They conduct these drills so that ever, if ever there was a citywide emergency, uh, we would know what to do. The sound of a smoke detector working on a low battery is an annoying beeping sound. It won't stop beeping until the issue of changing the battery has been addressed. The house alarm when activated has a small quick beep sound. However, when it's triggered, it makes a noise loud enough to shake the neighbors next door. It is Paul in the text that utters words that are in the form of the eschatological alarm to those believers in the Thessalonian community about the necessity of staying awake. And here's why. Because the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night Therefore, there is really no time for sleeping. And so I ask that you would pray with me and for me as I lift that theme for preaching this morning. No time for sleeping. It is a concern of Paul that the believers keep their focus on the moral imperatives of Christian behavior and really don't be caught <laughs> napping or uh, straying away from living in the light of Christ 
because the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The day of the Lord really is the day of judgment. It's an Old Testament understanding that Yahweh will punish the evil of Israel or that the wicked will face the terrible wrath of God. And there was an understanding, brothers and sisters, or rather a misunderstanding about the time of Jesus' return. There were those who thought that the return of Christ was going to be immediate. And when the community began to change and expectations started to wither, Paul stepped up and gave theological perspective. For those who had fallen asleep, Paul said that they are with the Lord. Paul goes on to say that the, that the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And he goes on to say this, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That brothers and sisters, the Lord's coming is certain. It's just not placed on the calendar. Therefore, the community is cautioned to be ready. For there's no time for sleeping. That it will come like a thief in the night. That's really quite an analogy. Uh, there is the word in the text that says suddenly. And I might add that this really refers to the surprise rather than the speed. But I, uh, I look at that analogy uh, of the thief because a thief is someone who steals. Someone who takes what is not there that my brothers and sisters a thief never announces when they're coming to take something that is not theirs in like manner the Lord's return will pattern this model therefore it is important for the children of God to be woke he also said it's like labor pains of a pregnant woman. And the labor pains of a pregnant woman means that she is at a point of certainty. And in like manner, when we look at this through the lens of our spiritual understanding, we come to terms with the return of Christ is certain like the labor pains of a pregnant woman. So if the first several verses speak to the necessity of preparedness, then the next several verses speak to the public modeling of awareness. Verse four and following. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk get drunk at night but since we belong to the day let us be sober listen putting on faith and love 
as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. You know, these two metaphors, uh, they interest me because they, they represent two different lifestyles. And these two different lifestyles will have two different outcomes. That there are children of the light, they are children of the day, and there are those who belong to the darkness are those who belong to the night. And it is these two groups that really occupy the truth of the text as well as the context in our contemporary world setting. Those that live in the light of God's word for their lives will find themselves in the category of being awake. And on the other hand, there are those who willfully enjoy the pleasures of hiding in the darkness of night. And so with this playful consideration of these two analogies, these two metaphors, darkness, night, light, and day, I think it's important for me to uh, lay before you that, that they do not necessarily have to do with chronos, that is the measure of time, you know, time, a.m. and p.m. But this is rather an attitude, this is an outlook, this is perception and also deception. This is about being awake, uh, sleep, uh, drunk, uh, sober. Sober, wake, sleep, drunk, all of these issues that are under consideration in the text. Drunk happens when there is too much of something that's being consumed. And there are a number of things that have that we have to be cautious of uh, when we talk about being drunk, uh, because there are so many things that can cause our drunkenness. That drunk behavior consists of poor judgment, lack of coordination, vision problems, slow breathing, drowsiness, even a loss of balance. And so when you lay something out like that, you have to have a for instance. So for instance, you have two groups of people protesting two different issues of concern. There is this group that is protesting the loss of life and all of the inequalities that surround that. And these protesters are labeled BLM, Black Lives Matter. There's another group that is protesting the loss of an election, and we shall call them the STS group, Stop the Steal. One group has signs that read Black Lives Matter, when you look in this crowd, you'll also see uh, the sign, no justice, no peace. And because of that being able to protest peaceably, they chant, uh, this is what democracy looks like. And then there is a curfew set by the authorities and if the occupied space is not cleared by a certain time, 
then with certainty arrests are made. The arrests are made by police who have been there in their full military garb. So when there is destruction of property uh, with the uh, Black Lives Matter group, sad to say, it happens in the community in which, in which they live. Uh, the, the, the other group that protests are doing so because they're not satisfied with the results of an election that they've been told that there have been massive voter fraud. Massive voter fraud done in communities where the precincts are predominantly black. And there are signs that read in this cluster, stop the steal. But there are some other symbols that we just cannot ignore. There is the Confederate flag. There is the, the Trump flag. That's important because this is the president of the United States of America. Speaking of America, there is as a symbol in this protest group, the American flag. That there is uh, and this may come as a surprise to some, but there is the Jesus flag, which leaves us uh, at a place and point of trying to identify which one. And then there is the symbol of the, of the hanging noose. Now, all of these signs are signs of supremacy. And they take that protest to the state capitol where there is little or no police resistance. They enter the building, destroy the property, lives have lost, and they do it because they really don't fear any consequences. Uh, and so rather than to draw any conclusions, it is mine this morning to let you hear. In fact, I hear Jesus saying, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And in our hearing, we are called to make a determination of which group is sober and awake and which group is sleep or drunk. Uh, what what group is operating with open eyes and, and then what group is binging on your not holding them accountable because they said that they're drunk. Now you do know that there is this old adage that comes from people who are in a drunken state for you never to hold it against them the next day what it is that they have said or done. And I'm here to argue that uh, if you don't want to face the consequences of your actions, that you, you need to not do it. Or if you're going to get drunk, get drunk by yourself. But it is ours now, uh, as we look at the world through eyes which are sober, to now see all of the inequalities. Because after you see it, there's just no way that you can pretend as if you have not seen it. And so those of us who are children of the day and children of the light, it is ours now to see and to process how to move forward in a godly manner. Because we need to be clear that it doesn't matter if you are uh, stop the steal or Black Lives Matter. The God that we serve loves us all. And there is no group of people anywhere that's been afforded the luxury of casting uh, evils upon any other group. 
it is ours to also understand that there is a group that has been fed misinformation. That they've been baptized from uh, news outlets uh, with information that is not true. And I'll, and I'll say this, whenever you constantly hear the same thing over and over again, whether it's true or whether it's not, it becomes a part of how you process. And, and so we're at this point that, that their public behavior uh, denotes how they have consumed, bless his high name, uh, their that portion of news. Uh, speaking of being consumed, that if we are consumed with ourselves, that will be on display. And if we are consumed with helping others, then that will be on display. That what is on display is what we are intoxicated with. Uh, and so our inward attitude will determine our outward aptitude. And so Paul, Paul says, says this to children of the light and day. I find it quite interesting because he makes wardrobe a priority that they are identified also publicly by what they put on. And he says to them, in essence, uh, for the matters of their being alert, being awake, being sober, he says, put on, put on faith. You, you got to wear it. He says, put on love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. The assumption with Paul is that uh, if you go that far in putting on your spiritual garb, you'll know to grab the rest of the stuff. That your, your spiritual clothing, Paul is suggesting, points to your sobriety. That those who, who dress up in faith, those who put on the helmet of salvation, are really indicating publicly that I'm sober. And I'm, I want to argue with you that when you're living in times like these and you have to face what we've had to face, you got to be sober. And if you leave any of your clothing, any of your uniform off as you're in the marketplace, there's a tendency that you'll retaliate. But when you, are, when you are dressed properly, you even learn how to hold your peace. Isn't that amazing? It's not that you don't have anything to say in retaliation. It is just that you are sober. You understand the consequences of your actions. And, and, and you don't want a negative reaction for the one who's called you to be. Therefore, you learn how to hold your peace. Put on faith, love, breastplate of hope, salvation as a helmet. These are the clothes that we dress in. This is our, this is our uniform. Uh, and then he, he goes on to say this. He says, God did not uh, appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, who died for us, whether we are awake or asleep, he died for us. He, he is saying to this community and he's saying to us that the hardest part has already been taken care of. That I'm, I'm asking you to uh, just dress the part, but you don't have to go to Calvary. He's already done that. He's, he's already died. Yeah, in fact, he bowed his head and died. 
and they took him from the tree and they put him in a borrowed tomb. It had to be borrowed because he wasn't going to be there long. And so the Apostle Paul says to the Thessalonian body, listen, the hard part has been taken care of. That, that he's already been for you the one who has paved the way. You don't have to make your own way. All you need to do is just walk in the steps that he's already made. And, and then he goes on to say, he goes on to say, and whether you are awake or whether you sleep, because you have to understand that the argument from the Thessalonian church was that we thought that he was soon to return. And the complexion of the community is changing in such a way. What's really your uh, theological position in this? And then Paul steps up and says, well, the main point is to be present with the Lord. And he is so dominant uh, eternally and in time that it makes no difference whether you fall asleep or awake. God still rules. And God is still in charge. And even though people are absent from us, they're not absent from God. He knows where they are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So listen, I, I want to encourage everybody to, to start living this gift. Start living this gift. God has covered every other base. Start living this gift. And thank him for the gift that he's given you. Yeah, thank him for making you who you are. And, and, and then learn how to be comfortable in your own skin. Because the light that you're looking for ain't the light that's outside of you. The light that you're looking for is already in you. You got to trust it. You got to trust that God is ordering your steps. That you've placed on the, the uniform, the clothing that he's told you. And then whatever the assignment is, live that assignment as a woke person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If if we were together, I'd be asking you to turn to your neighbor or something like that and just say, start living like you're woke. Start living. Start living like you like you. Well, I go to my seat with this. I go to my seat. And so he says this. And, and this is interesting. He says, therefore, encourage each other with these words. You encourage each other with these words that the alarm that's necessary if we should start to daydream if we should start to nap the persons that sound the alarm are per persons who are in our community that there is there is the fire alarm there's the house alarm there is the emergency broadcasting system alarm but he's not talking about any of these He's talking about persons who are a part of the household of faith. That when you see me slipping and, and I'm not thinking about sounding the alarm, I'm counting on you. I, I need your words to encourage me, to get me back on track. That we are each other's keepers. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so there's some I know that you're saying, but I don't ever need that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. All of us do. Let me break this news to you this morning that none of us have arrived as, as a point. In fact, there is no arrival for any of us. The, the journey continues even into eternity. And because we embrace our humanity, we know we need each other. And Paul says, you encourage each other with these words. Hallelujah. And so I, I'm done. That, that's my message. But I, I want you to know, stay woke. Don't go to sleep. Yeah, when you see... Places of darkness, 
uh, don't even run from that. You go and provide light in, in that darkness. That's, that, that's, that's our calling. We belong to the Lord, and he has us covered. Yes, he does. He has us covered. And so, and so I close by thanking him for right-mindedness. I thank him for health, and I thank him for strength. I thank him for ordering our steps. I thank him that I'm wise enough not to take anything that he's done for granted. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadow come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And so I got a reason to sing today. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know. I said I know. Some things I know. And one thing I know. Yeah, I know that he watches over me. I know that he woke me up this morning. I know that he started me on my way. Now I want to know, do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And if you're not too mean, wherever you are, you ought to open your mouth, throw back your head, and declare, I'm one of the redeemed. And while the blood is running warm in my veins, I'm happy to say so. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Good morning, Shalom. This is Deacon Frank Foster. Hope you're doing well and praying for the health and safety of you, family, and friends in these unique times. If you're like me and my family in quarantine and we like to cook, there's a little bit more around my waist than the last time we got together, but God is still good all the time. I'm here with a couple of reminders. As though we are socially distanced, we still need to stay spiritually connected. First is to continue to be faithful in our tithes and offerings. Our church ministries and community outreach and support are supported by your tithes and offerings as our single source of support. But not only that, God wants you to experience the complete fullness of his blessings, and we do that through our tithes and offerings. He says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That means everything we have comes from and belongs to God. We're just simply stewards of it. What he requires is our ties, as it is holy unto God. The beautiful part is you can be God-giving. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. That's God's promise. So I encourage you to continue healthy giving. And if you haven't started, God says, test me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven towards you. In these days, it's the perfect time to start. Our finance ministry has made it easy for you to give. You can call it in. You can use an envelope and mail it in or drop it off at the church. Use the Shalom website. That's what I use. I love it. Or you can text it in using the text number on the screen. Final reminder is to reach out and stay connected with the saints in ministry and church. There is so much technology we can use, and God has hit the pause button so we can reflect 
and refocus on the one thing Jesus summed up in one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. We can socially distance and still practice fellowship. I'm pretty sure that you got one of these. If not, a letter, email, or a simple phone call will brighten somebody's heart today and yours. Remember, true giving starts in the heart. Whether your ties, your love, your time, or your talents. So these are your reminders. Miss you and can't wait until we're all together again. May God bless you richly and shalom. Thank you.